Hello, the Darkness344 here, and in today's video, I'll be fixing a mistake that I made around a year ago. So, over here, I have my 8 um, bit multiplier that I made, and this is not the mistake, but I'll, I'll show you the mistake in a minute. And this basically accepts two 4 bit inputs and gives out an 8 bit output. So, this is a sequential multiplier, um, I think it's around 5 ticks per multiplication, so well, not per like result, but per like sequential thing basically. Uh, per, per loop in the data. However, I did also release a video after that on this one over here, which is um, a 16 bit output given two 8 bit inputs, and it was fairly small and fairly compact. However, this does not actually work. In the test that I did in the video, it did actually give out the correct result, but that was um, more by coincidence than anything. So when I did test this multiplier, it was actually giving out the correct results, even though um, theoretically um, the multiplier circuit design is actually wrong and the results it's giving out were just correct by pure coincidence. So I removed the video, I took it down from my channel and I said in the comments of that video, because I've just unlisted it, I haven't actually removed it, I said it in the comments that I would um, make a follow-up video at some point in the future. And today is that some point in the future, so <laughs> basically a year. <laughs> and I have basically iterated upon this design and tested it a bit better, so <laughs> um, hopefully it actually works properly now. So this design did work, but the 8-bit one with 16-bit output does not work. And also the output was a bit weird anyway, so I've kind of fixed a few of those issues. So onto the new design. So over here has been where I've been designing the new multiplier, and of course these designs are slightly larger, well quite a lot larger in fact, and that's just an unfortunate um, outcome because the old design was quite flawed in the fact that um, the way I thought it was able to get the upper 8 bits was actually completely wrong, so I've redesigned the multiplier so it actually does give the correct um, output. So here's two different designs that I've come up with. Um, One's just quite tall and gives a tall output like this, so this is kind of useful um, if you have if you're using like a vertical architecture and you want all your 16-bit output to come out vertically like this. Um, so you feed in two 8-bit inputs and then you get out a 16-bit output. So this could even be used in like a 16-bit computer because you could probably um, make a shifter that will shift data down uh, to these lower 8 bits or, or you could just use the lower 8 bits when you're inputting when you're inputting numbers to this multiplier so this does have one gap um, like this between the two 8 bit halves which is a bit annoying but of course because the design um, it's kind of hard to get it compact um, I could probably have reduced it down to a two block gap but I think it's better having a three block gap like this because then um, they're all kind of like odd numbers and it just works out a bit better uh, building stuff. So then there's also this design which is more suited for 8-bit computers and um, well 8-bit just anything really that needs an 8-bit multiplier. So if you want a multiplier that uses um, that's churning out quite a lot of num multiplications quite fast um, this multiplier might not be the fit for you because this is a sequential one not a combinational one but if it's just a multiplication unit say you want to add on to like your computer's um, I.O. or you just want to build it into your computer um, this is actually quite a good thing because it's quite small and it's fairly fast so what you could do is when you're actually putting numbers in you could start the multiplication and like stall the clock or you could even have it um, once the multiplication is finished it could like trigger an interrupt or something um, to um, access the result so yeah um, I kind of prefer this design than this design because it's a bit smaller and they're pretty much the same speed as well. So so the way this works is we have um, two 8-bit inputs over here and you could probably move these around a bit but we just put two 8-bit numbers in here and then I think there was a button somewhere here yeah we just hit this button right here and um, it'll do the multiplication and as you can see this is the lower 8-bit half over here and this is the upper 8-bit half over here and we also have a carry out over here. So then we also have this 8-bit output over here, and this is just, uh, this this isn't needed, so you can cut all this circuitry off if you really wanted to, but this allows you to swap between the upper and the lower halves. So this is perfect if, you're, um, if it is an 8-bit computer and you only want um, 
the upper or the lower half because you, you can't really access 16 bits of data at once um, if your data bus is only 8 bits. So um, say I wanted to store the result of two 8-bit numbers being multiplied. Well, first of all, I'd input them to multiply, trigger the multiplication, then I'd output the lower 8 bits, then I'd output the upper 8 bits. And to swap between them, I've just put a little circuit over here. So you can use this lever um, to swap between the lower and the upper half. And this, of course, can be moved a bit. So um, all it is is just a simple input to this tower over here. So the way that this fixes the old multiplier is that instead of the carry out being the upper half, which was <laughs> incorrect as pointed out by a commenter, um, I've brought the carry out, brought it all the way down, fed it into the carry in of the of this second multiplier circuit over here, and also fed um, some of the towers up here into that one as well. And this all just seems to work quite nicely. So um, I guess let's test it out. So first things first, I'm going to clear it, um, set all the results to zero so you can see the multiplication is actually working. And what I'm gonna do is just multiply zero times zero, which of course just equals zero. So if I set all the inputs to zero, I just hit this once and all the outputs should be cleared to zero. Now there is a slightly faster way of resetting this. I think you can just um, power these towers like this, um, but it's a bit complicated and I'd recommend looking at Matt Back Wing's video where he also builds a multiplier um, because the reset circuit that I've built into this is very similar to his one um, wherein you basically, because these are um, carry cancel adders, um, you basically um, input all ones to it and then you also add in a carry one, well a carry in so it resets it to zero. So that's basically what the reset line is doing. So now we're going to input some numbers, um, I guess we could just do 11001100 times 0110101 and um, let's actually check this on the calculator so that's going to be um, binary and we're doing 11001100 times 0110101 and if we hit enter, it's going to be 01010110110111100. Um, now let's just multiply that. And then we should hopefully get that answer. So there's no carry, there's no carry out on this multiplication. It's just a 16-bit result. And this is why testing is important because it's giving out the wrong answer again. But I've just realized that's because this line <laughs> is not being compiled. So um, that was that was a close one. I thought I'd have to debug this and do a whole other video, <laughs> but luckily we caught it in testing. So um, yeah, this 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 proves why you should actually test your designs quite thoroughly. So what I'm going to do to fix that is just move this one block up. So instead, um, I guess I could just put a torch here like this, um, and this should fix all the issues with the design. So now let's just put. A lever here and now that torch should reach the very top yeah there we go so now it's actually giving out the correct result which should be um let's put on the lower one so we have actually this is the upper one i think yeah so this is zero one zero one zero one one zero uh which is the upper half and that's correct and now if we swap it to the lower half um we get one one zero one 1100, which is also correct. So I'm using the FX991EX calculator uh, just to check my results. I've just turned it on to binary mode. So, and if we put this in decimal mode, um, this number is 22,236. So let's test the second design. So I've already put the numbers in over here and um, it does have a previous result so you don't actually need to clear the previous result because when you activate um, the multiplier it will automatically clear the previous result before it multiplies out the numbers and the same goes to this version over here um, it doesn't matter if there's a result already stored in the multiplier because when you um, start the multiplication it'll just clean that result out so we have the same numbers as in this one and we should be getting the same result so if i just hit this button um let's just wait a bit and as you can see 
uh, the numbers are coming in. It takes a bit of time, and we get the same result. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So there we go, both designs show the same number, and I've also checked this with a calculator, and it all seems to be correct. So this is demonstrating that we can actually do full 8-bit multiplications, which is actually quite useful to have in a computer. Um, I guess normally you'd probably just use the lower half and you'd be doing small multiplications, but if there's ever a time where you do need the full 16-bit result, um, this multiply is actually very good uh, for that case. Also, I guess on a 16-bit computer, um, this one's kind of useful, but of course you'll only be limited to 8-bit inputs. So before I end the video, I guess I'll just do a few more showcases of this one. Um, let's just try a few numbers, so I guess we could do, uh, let's just do a small number for now. So I guess we could do 1100 0 times 1101. 0 1. um, let's just test that, so I think that is, uh, let's just put that into calculator, so 1100 0 0 times 1101. 0 1 put that into binary mode and we should be getting out 1001111100 and here we go 1001111100 which is correct and for the upper half uh, we get nothing so if I turn that onto the upper half just by flicking this lever um, it should just all be zeros so there we go so the multiplication we just did was 12 times 13 which equals 156 and if we um, actually just plug this number into a calculator, uh, you also find that this result is also 156 because we have the um, so one, two, so four. So we have four plus eight plus 16 plus um, 128, and that equals 156. So there we go. Um, this multiplier works both on small numbers like this, just four bit numbers, and it also works on larger um, eight bit numbers like that. So um, of course, there will be a world download in the description below uh, with both these designs, and feel free to use them. Just credit to this video, I guess. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully, um, uh, you guys can use these designs. Um, I think they can actually be iterated upon, so they can be made slightly faster. Um, these have also have a five tick data loop, um, but I think they possibly can be made to be four ticks if you. Um, It'll make the design a bit bigger, but you can make them slightly faster um, by uh, removing this repeater here, I think, and then playing around with the input so that um, it matches the same signal strength as this input over here. Um, it's, a, it's a bit confusing, but if you use like barrels and the comparators, it should be possible to make these designs faster. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'm out.